life in three dimensions got me bent and got me twisting. I don't want to set a lot, but I should probably stop pretending. I don't really hold the key and I can't really push a button. I just step up to the mic and try my very best to bust it, but I ran out of breath. It's tight in my chest. My feet just might fail. I can't stand up breath. Welcome back, Racially Speaking family, to where we have real and honest conversations about race as it's viewed through the lenses of faith, family, and vocation. I'm David, and you are listening to episode 21. The nightmare might scare you, the worst than reality. They hunt you by day, y'all rob me my Arbery. Everybody got a time, but that's less than comforting. I hope I'm alive by the time they choose to come for me. Mosquitoes in the vein, or leeches on my soul. This money on my mind is a fracture in my bones. You get crippled by continuing existence like a ghost. And they wonder why we drink, and they wonder why we smoke, and they wonder why we think that everything's a joke. I'm shocked that we can sleep, must be the thought of letting go. What's up, what's up? Welcome back again, Racially Speaking family. Uh, Man, I am extra, extra pumped uh, today for a lot of reasons. But first, I mean, how about that new music that we just heard from our good friend uh, Dylan Dent, as always? I mean, he just continues to pump out new music. So please, I've said it before, like, go check out his music. He's cranking stuff out and he covers so many genres. I think I've sold him short in the past by referring to him as a uh, simply a hip-hop artist. Um, he's not only that, he he spans a lot of different genres. So please check out Spotify, Apple Music, or wherever else you get your music and, and podcasts. He's, he's killing it, loving the um, music he's letting us use here on the podcast. So, man, that's one. And two, it's 2022. This is the first episode of 2022, so I'm extra pumped about that um, with not only the new music, but some other changes we're doing and where the podcast is headed. Man, I wish I should have made this uh, episode 22 to make it, no, 22, 22. <laughs> anyway, and last but not least, if you listened to the last episode, I kind of made an announcement towards the end, kind of a quasi announcement, but I'm joined today and first, or I guess actually third time of many more to come by two-time guest and my good friend, John Mark Walker. John Mark, thank you so much for being here, my man. I'm bringing, we're bringing you in, and you're here. It's here. We've been talking about this for a while, but John Mark, you have agreed, yep. for better, for worse, I think it's going to be better. <laughs> yeah, I hope to, you're not worse. <laughs> to, to help steer this ship and co-host um, alongside side me on here as we start 2022 yeah. and episode 21, so... Man, thank you for coming on, and and here we go. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, excited to be here with you. Excited to uh, support you in this work. I think um, you have set up a great show, a great podcast here. Um, you've had a lot of wonderful, excellent guests with with great things to say. I've benefited from it so much. I remember um, when my wife said that you had a podcast. I was like, oh man, I got to get on that and listen to it. And uh, I haven't turned back. It's been great. Like I was looking back over, over all the episodes today um, because of the questions you sent me. And um, I was like, oh, I've really listened to like all of them. Like I fully have listened to them all and I loved them all. Um, So I'm honored to be a part of it. uh, Honored to support it. Excited to see uh, what's to come for this show. So glad to be here. That's perfect. So you did your homework preemptively because that'll, that'll come back. You'll, you'll need, um, to, Prove, prove your listening uh, or your, yeah, prove, uh, your retention. Prove uh, that I'm your biggest fan. Later that's, in the show. That's the requirement for being on the yeah, show. Yeah. Or at least anyone, a fan. If any one of you out there are a bigger fan, um, then maybe you can get my co-host job. I know <laughs> from under me. So you'll have to always prove your fans of, of the guests. Uh, I mean, I know I am. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll get into that for sure. I mean, first you mentioned Meg, your wife, will this inspire her to come out of retirement? Ah. Uh, I hope so. Yeah. Um, she, I mean, her podcast was great. So, yeah. Um, yeah. It what, was great. I'm trying to remember. Yeah. So I hope so. I mean, that's why I have this mic that I'm speaking on right now. Mm, yeah. Uh, so. Speaking of mic, shout out to uh, Anita Harris, AKA my mom, AKA Mimi. That's her, her grandma name for uh, this, uh, this Christmas present um, that I, I've just received. We did late Christmas with her. So she actually just, Headed back home from uh, from Radford, but I'm a proper podcaster now because I've got the 
the shore mic. So loving it. Hopefully all you um, tech gurus can tell a, a lovely difference on, on your ears. So that's awesome. Shout out. Mimi, Mimi is a great grandmother name. Shout out to Mimi. Yeah, it is. It rolls off the, rolls off the tongue. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's still ringing in my ears from my kids saying it over it and over time. this whole weekend. Yeah. <laughs> so I get that. Anyway. All right. So I got, as you mentioned, some questions. So like John Mark, you're coming in co-hosting, but we want to do an episode. We've been playing this for a while now. Um, most of our listeners, especially like you mentioned, if you've listened to all the previous episodes, you've been on a couple of times before. So people that have been around for a while know a little bit about you, but we wanted to spend some time properly introducing you and um, our listeners to just, yeah, get an understanding of more who you are and also to uh, kind of get an understanding of what to expect from the podcast moving forward and just kind of, um, I think, get our feet wet together and what our dynamic will be like here on the pod. And if, you, if you're listening, um, I know you guys are excited, but hopefully you guys are excited to... Um, have John Mark on here with, with our dynamic um, bouncing off each other regularly. But rest assured, we are still going to have more amazing guests and interviews coming on the show. So if, if you're sitting there like, what's going to happen to the guests? They're not going anywhere. If yeah. anything, I think they'll increase. Um, would, would you agree, John Mark? Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. I mean, yeah. I'm, you have, uh, you have connection to, connections to wonderful people. So um, I feel like I pale in comparison with my contacts, but I, I'm, yeah, I think, I think people will come out. I think we'll find people. Um, so I'm excited for, uh, I'm excited to connect the people I know to you because I think you're an excellent interviewer and you have great thoughts and you draw out great, great thoughts from others. So I'm excited for you to interview people in my life. Um, yeah. Well, I appreciate that. I hope you still feel that way after you have to be the receiver of more long winded questions and true racially speaking fashion. So I've, oh, you've already seen some, most of the questions. So let's just jump right in, my man. Um, give our listeners a peek into who you are as it relates to your passion for racial justice, as you view it through the lenses of faith, family, and vocation, which, um, you know, are kind of our three pillars of, of the podcast as we seek racial justice and have these, these candid conversations. So who are you with your with your passion for racial justice with those three things in mind? Again, I know yeah. that's a lot. Yeah, no, no, that's great. So um, I think a passion for justice, I don't know when it started, but I, I uh, when I was in college, I majored in political science for, because I, I love justice. And I did that because my favorite class in high school was um, it was government. <laughs> so but it's something about um, doing what's right for other people. And pursuing the flourishing of other people has always uh, seemed important to me. Um, and I love how you frame it, faith and family. And um, I think faith, so I'm a Christian um, and I'm in full-time ministry. Uh, and something that sticks out to me from Jesus and what he said is, uh, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for justice, mm. for righteousness. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Yeah. Uh, synonymous with justice. And um, it's because they will be satisfied. Right. So my faith in Christ gives me hope that me and anyone else who hungers and thirsts for justice in this world will be satisfied uh, eternally. Um, and then I also think about like Christ and his teaching, right, uh, of love. And um, I often when I talk about it, uh, racial justice or, or uh, ethnocentrism, when I talk about those things, I often talk about uh, as followers of Christ, as Christians, we're called to love uh, three different people, right? Uh, family, our, our brothers and sisters in Christ, love your neighbor as yourself, right? Jesus taught us that. And then love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. And so, I mean, yeah. those three relationships that covers everybody in the world. So um, I love that too, that he taught so much about love and demonstrated it uh, with his life. Um, and then uh, just one more, uh, a couple more things like um, on this, on this love track, right? Uh, the, the Bible talks about you cannot love God and hate your brother who's made mm. in his image, people made in the image of, of God. Um, there's, there's some divine in our nature uh, because we're made, God breathed life into us, right? And so you can't say that you love God and, and oppress, abuse, hurt, 
uh, your brother uh, without repenting of that, right? You can't do that. And so I just, I, I mean, I'm inspired by that, by who God is, by his nature, that he wants to love people, that he wants his followers to love people. And then even outside of, uh, of Christianity, I think there's this um, moral imperative on all people, and it's to do to others, or don't do to others as you wouldn't have them do to you, right? Um, but for Christians, it's yeah. flipped, do to others as you would have them do to you. And I think that that is universal, right? So um, I think that that goes into me. I'll talk, I think I'll talk more about family as the podcast goes along. But yeah, yeah. Uh, as far as faith goes, like, um, because I follow Christ, I care about justice. Uh, and that, and that mm. uh, pretty much boils down to that for me. Yes. That's great. Yeah. I mean, and I want to, I mean, I would ask you the same question. Like, um, yeah. We, where did your passion come from? How, how did your passion grow up? And I, and I know we learned about it uh, when you shared about your story a little bit, but I yeah. mean, how would you answer this question? Similarly to you. So we, you know, we're, we're both in, in ministry and have other, you know, I think different roles um, we carry even outside of work uh, or ministry work as well. But um, so, yeah, I mean, when I picked, these three, I feel like pillars sounds kind of dramatic, but three lenses. Yeah. Lenses, um, for the podcast, I felt like they were just relatable, but queer. Um, not that everyone, I, I guess for the most part, everyone has some type of faith and just, it wasn't, I, I use the word faith cause I, um, I'm a Christian as well. Like, um, like everyone knows, um, who's listened and knows me, but I also really feel passionate about this being a conversation for anybody to be able to listen to, um, yeah. yet everyone that comes on be able to be authentic. Like I don't, I don't mean that, and I want to hide my faith or anything like that. But I, I do, especially at the time that we're living in now, which we'll get into, and even when I started it, there's there's a big, um, I think, divide along religious lines and racial lines um, that I wanted to help gap in these conversations. Like I wanted to be able to speak to people who maybe didn't, who maybe don't have a great view of Christianity, the faith that you and I both um, identify with and practice. Because I think, like you mentioned, Jesus and what it means to follow him, that that is right and that he would have and does care about that um, throughout his mm -hmm. ministry. Um, did care about speaking to people that didn't even believe in him. And mm -hmm. so I, I just really care about having these kind of conversations with whoever. Um, and I'm really passionate about our faith, my faith. Yeah. And vocation, you know, everyone's got some type of vocation. Um and family. And I don't, when I said family, even I didn't mean just, you know, the nuclear family or like wife and kids. And that's the only, uh, we have wives and kids, but that's not what I meant. I didn't mean just that, like there's right. all different types of families. And so right. I wanted them to be specific, but broad. And it also left a ton of room for me to learn um, from people that come on here and just in my research and studying um, for the episodes even, or even after the episodes, looking more stuff up that, that I, I learned because I, that's why I kept it broad. So I, and I never want to come on here and, uh, and I'm sure you'll, um, back this up too, like, and be an expert. There's things I, I know what I'm talking about on here and I, I'll talk about those, but some right. things, uh, that's why we have guests on. I'm going to have guests on because I'm not going to try and speaking to something that I'm not an expert on. Um, yeah, that's, like that's you'll talk I, about the NBA and I'll talk about yeah, Marvel. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> See, I'm inspiring to get into Marvel. You're aspiring to get into the NBA, so it was a natural yeah. fit, natural fit. Um, yeah. yeah, you know, there's been a lot of things that, um, whether it's social media or just big words and things that I feel like our culture is just almost becoming desensitized to of learning about and we're not really learning. We're just hearing words and thinking or familiar with stuff that we're really not, myself included. And so I, I'm passionate about understanding, okay, you know, what does it mean? What does this hashtag mean? What are people mad about? Yep. Yep. Let's delve into that instead of being closed-minded. Um, anyway, man, these are your questions. Um, but uh, <laughs> I feel like they're our questions. Well, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. That, that's fair. 
Um, you just wrote the you wrote the questions. So. <laughs> yeah. But I mean a little bit about you know our families. Um, we're both a mixed families. Yep. Uh, we have kids. Our, our wives are white. Um, yep. Similar vocation, faith, stuff like that. So I think it all kind of blends together at different times. Um, and that, that's kind of a little bit about why and how I I put it together. So it's personal yeah, and much. personal and outward focused at the same time. I, I'd say. Um, all right, so and we can camp out here as much as much as you like, but I don't I don't always do this, but I do find it helpful, and I think it's for sure um, appropriate now. But you know, as we look back on the last kind of one to two years, we when I was writing that, I was like, we could go back even farther because this happened, because yeah, this happened, because this happened. I was like, all right, I'll just stick with one like to two, one to two ish years. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So as we look back on the last one to two years and are moving into 2022, you know, it's 2022 right now. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah. Um, how are you <laughs> feeling, funny. man? Like, are you feeling more hopeful or not hopeful or defeated when it comes to racial justice and reconciliation? I feel like that was an important question for us to talk about on this yeah. podcast. Yeah. Well, I love um, I love the paradigm. I love how you put it, hopeful or defeated, right? I, yeah. I, I mean, when when you wrote that, I, I pictured like a like a scale starting at negative ten, where it's like completely defeated, going to zero where you're neutral, and like positive ten where you're you're you know completely hopeful, like we're moving forward and everything is mm-hmm. uh, you know daisies and sunshine. But um, yeah, so I mean, even though I love it, I love the paradigm. I'm going to say uh, I feel both at times and neither, right? Both and neither. Um, mm, okay. Yeah, I mean, so much. How do you sum up the past two years? I I feel like uh, I'm going to share a major point in my life, right? So I live in Richmond, Virginia. I'm not. Uh, I wasn't born here. My wife was, um, and her. I think her parents were, and uh, her family. So. Um, so much family around here. I love Richmond, Virginia. I feel like a hermit crab, right? I, I, uh, I moved from one home and I put on this shell and this is now my home and I don't want another. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so living in Richmond, Virginia, there's, you know, Monument Avenue and all those statues. And that was such a, um, hot button issue for, mm. uh, the past couple of years. Not, not before that. It was kind of like, Oh, they'll never come down. Like they'll always be up there. They'll always be in place. Never come down. <laughs> Um, but I say this and I was, I was there when the Lee statue, um, the Lee statue was hanging by a rope being taken off the pedestal. Mm. And, um, I mean, I mean, talk about like meaningful symbolism, right? M- me, a black man in America, whose family, right? This is where we talk about family, right? So my yeah. family, my ancestors, um, were enslaved here in Richmond. They, you know, it was one of a major slave port. So somebody mm. I was related to came through here um, and then, you know, spread out from there to North Carolina, Ohio, Kentucky. Yeah. Um, and so for, for their great, great, great grandson to see uh, the Lee statue come down. I mean, it's a powerful picture of progress in our country uh, towards racial justice. And um, yeah, I, I mean, it was just, I was honored to be there. I don't think I'll ever forget, forget that day or that moment. And, I got the videos and pictures to prove that I was there. And uh, it was a sacred moment. It really felt like I I went with two uh, local pastors who care about this too. And uh, after it came down, we took a moment and we prayed for our city and our country. And um, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like that's a good, it's, it's hopeful um, because it it happened. It's symbolic because it's something, you know, we can check it. It literally is an idol. I mean, a statue idol. That was a Freudian slip, a statue, (laughs) right? Um, (laughs) Statue uh, that uh, symbolized um, a people group, an ideology, right? Um, But it was an ideology that was bent against um, a racial group, right? So um, yeah, symbols aren't bad, right? It was a good symbol. Yeah that it came down, right? That's a good sign uh, of progress. So I was glad to be there. So that gave me hope. Um, Mm -hmm. I mean, I have more to say, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on that or your thoughts on, on, uh, where you're sitting. I want to hear more. I want to hear more for sure. But, um, that's a, I think that's a fantastic example because it's very helpful for me to hear the 
the specifics and detailed personal experience, um, not just literally, literally watching it, but the fact that it happened and how that type of symbolism can be important and impactful for generations um, because of the past and future and now. Um, like it's just, it's very, very powerful when you take into account things like history um, and people who looked like you and what they experienced fast forward to what you're experiencing. That's, that's just very powerful. And I feel mm-hmm. like that is a beautiful thing to understand. Um, especially as a non-black person to just get a glimpse into that, because I also think that sheds light and sheds light on just, I'm trying to figure out what I'm like, just how personal it is. Cause I think on the flip side, which you, I feel like you even addressed indirectly. Some people might look at, you know, a statue coming down and be like, who cares? Like that's nothing. Mm-hmm. And it, it's not nothing. It can be, it doesn't mean it's not possible for the, for it to stop there, that it could be performative yeah. and that it could come off in the end as nothing, but yeah. it's, it's not nothing. Um, yeah. when you have the big picture, um, yeah. I, and uh, what, you know, Robert E. Lee stood for and just all, there's so many connections and that's, that's very powerful to, I think, take into account and to understand your perspective of all that. Yeah. Yeah. Performative. I like, I like that word because I mean, while I was there, I, I saw the mayor come out and the governor come out and there's like, look at this photo sure. op. Right. So, yeah. I mean, I don't want to like, I don't want to say that that's their only motive for doing it. Cause I think it was a good thing that it came down. And also I'm not a politician. You have to take your photo ops. You know yeah, what yeah, happens? Yeah. You got to get that good press. So I don't. I don't want to hate on this. You shouldn't not take it down. Right. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> shouldn't not take it down. You also shouldn't not get your picture next to it when it's yeah, down. Right. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. I saw them there. So there could be a performative aspect. I I then talked to my neighbor. So I live in a um, a neighborhood that is progressively black. I don't know. There's some blocks that are wider and some blocks that are are blacker and it's a pretty clear line and we're like right on the edge um okay and uh, m- my neighbor has lived here for 50 years and uh i saw him the day that i saw the statue come down and he said that in all his time here i mean he never went by the statue so for him it was like well that's cool you yeah. know but but largely symbolic you know mm-hmm. so so i love that you brought that up too like it, it it means something, but it, it might not mean much. And it, and it probably doesn't mean as much as we hope it would mean. So it's a yeah. step forward, but it's a, you know, it's a little step. So. Yeah. To me, that's, I mean, that's even an example of ge- different generational experiences, mm-hmm. um, maybe even coincidental experiences. If you just said you never really went by it yeah. or cared, but also a gentle reminder that, uh, people of color aren't a monolithic, uh, people, (laughs) black people aren't monolithic and yeah, you're, you're allowed to feel differently than another black person. Um, yeah, there's man, so many things we could unpack with that. What were, you said you could keep going. What, what were, where'd you leave off? Well, I mean, I talked about the, you know, hope, the hopeful, right. That gave me hope, but, um, I don't know. I don't know if defeated, tired, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. ready to stop this fight, this wrestle, ready to, to just, you know, take a break. Um, and I don't know if I find a place to rest. Um, I, I think, uh, the past couple of years have been clarifying, um, <laughs> to borrow a Kanye West song. And, you know, I don't always I'm mm-hmm. borrow from Kanye West, but, uh, he says some good stuff sometimes, but in one of his lines, he's like, uh, racism isn't dead. They just be concealing it. Right. Mm. Um, and I feel like, um, the past couple years, you know, politically, um, socially, culturally, a broader culture, in America, um, we, we've gotten some clarity on how far, uh, majority culture is willing to, uh, go in caring about racial justice. Like, um, we like, where's the point where we have talked about it too much? Where's the point where, um, okay, George Floyd's murderers now, uh, behind bars and he's declared a murderer. Right. Uh, yeah. so he's facing some justice. Like we stopped talking about it. Same thing with Ahmaud Arbery. We stopped talking about it. Like, so where, where's the line for people? Where do we fall off? And so I think, I think it's been clarifying bringing some, 
um, some of the ugly out of people. So we, we stop seeing the polite, uh, kind, nice, the polite, nice front that people present and, and start seeing some realities of, of uh, where we are, racially speaking. <laughs> yeah. in, uh, oh, nice. In the country. So, um, yeah. So, and that, that can be discouraging and defeating. Like, it's, yeah. we're not as far as we thought we are. We're, it feels like we're moving back in, um, in some civil rights regulations it feels like we're moving backwards in time and, yeah. and that's discouraging, you know? So, um, that's why I would say both. Yeah. I was going to say you touched on it, um, in your first, um, part of the answer, I feel like there's this, like, there's just a need to, or a need, I think we need in our conversations to address consistently like progress versus, um, staying the same. Like, I think it's both. Like you said, like, I think the saying, it seems like the more things change, the more they stay the same. It's true. Yes. But I also, I don't camp out there so much to say that nothing has changed, though. But I think it's got to be, we can't conveniently lean into one of those at one time and then the other at a different time. It's both. And I think it's very, if you're willing to think about it and just look at the bigger picture, you'd see it. Um, I mean, I think an example, not an example, but like, I think it would be disrespectful to, you know, people who fought for all, you know, all the progress that has truly been made to camp out and just say, oh, like nothing's changed. Like, you know, if, you know, this person was here, this person there, they'd be appalled because nothing's, nothing's changed. And that's absolutely not true. Yeah. But I feel like I heard this on a Chris Rock thing interview or something, but I can't remember what he's it was. A smart guy. Yeah, he's he's brilliant. Um, yeah. But it, so it's disrespectful, I think, on one end to say, "Oh, nothing's changed," but I think it's it's fair to address what continues to not change or steps that are yeah. being taken to move yeah. backward. Because I think you can also have um, I, what I think Chris Rock was saying is uh, Jackie Robinson syndrome. And they go, oh, well, there's a black baseball player, so we you know everything's good. The color yeah, barriers no broke, or black, you know, <laughs> black president, everything, you know, black president. Yeah, 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 there's yeah. no, you know, look how far that's that's the benchmark for. There's yeah. no more slavery, and now he holds the highest office. Like we're good. Clearly, that was not the case. Um. So anyway. Yeah, there's a there's an SNL there's an SNL skit that happened recently. Uh, Bo and Yang, and then the actor who played, um, what's his name? I can't say it. The actor who, who played Shang-Chi. Uh, Simu Liu. Um, yeah, when he was hosting SNL. Yeah, yeah, I think you said it great. They were doing, um, they were doing superlatives for, for yeah. Uh, yeah, Asian, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Asian actors. It, it was, I mean, it was hilarious. But yeah, it's the same thing. The same thing for you. You pick mm-hmm. the ethnicity or the race, and it's the, you know, it's the same thing. Like, um, can there only be one, you know, like, can we yeah. have more? <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I, I appreciate you said that. And then also celebrating, like taking time to remember uh, the victories, like how we got here. I, I mean, I'm, I'm a black landowner in Richmond, Virginia, right. Mm. There was a time when that wasn't a, like, that wasn't a thing, you know, in our country. And, and, and here we are, here I am, I get college educated. Like, so there's, there's been a lot of progress, uh, but we still have a lot more. And, and I think, what, what you made me think of when you're, when you're talking about this is um, we look back at the things that we have done. We look forward to the things that need to be done in terms of justice. Um, uh, but we also don't sit still because if you sit mm-hmm. still, we're going to be pushed backwards, you know? Yeah. So we also, we also have to keep working and working to not lose uh, some of the ground we've gained uh, towards racial justice. So, um, yeah. Listen, yeah, I mean, we need to be faithful to a, to call a spade a spade yep. and not um, attribute all progress to that it came about positively. Yep. Um, you know, like a lot of the times it's begrudgingly and that's putting yep. it politely. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Screen. So like, I mean, a great example is you're a black landowner, like big picture that is incredible, insane progress if that's the only way you want to look at it. Right. But that doesn't mean we don't need to talk about housing discrimination. Yeah. Redlining. Um, 
all the, all the, all that goes into bank that discrimination. Yeah, yeah. Bank deserts, like places yep. where people can't get access to bank, yes. uh, you know, wealth and, and access, yep. lack of access to, uh, generate wealth for your family. Mm-hmm. Like that's a real thing. Uh, I mean, I, my, I do own a house, but my house, there's not a bank that's conveniently close walking mm-hmm. distance or a grocery store. So mm-hmm. for um, my neighbors who are uh, less connected than me and my wife, I don't know where they keep their money. I hope it's not in a mattress under their bed, mm-hmm. but you know what I mean? Like they can't, they can't uh, gain interest on that. So um, yeah. Yeah. I love that. You said that we, just because we made progress doesn't mean we, we stopped talking about these issues. Yeah. And you mentioned, um, I mean, and th- these are just, we don't want to do all the thousands of other stories in justice, but the big stories from, you know, 20, 2020, 2021, um, that we talked a little bit here on the podcast and that, you know, these are ones that everyone would know about at this point, you know, Ahmaud Arbery, I wrote down some of these to remember specifics. I wasn't just off the cuff yeah. saying these happened, but, um, so Ahmaud Arbery, February 23rd, 2020, um, was murdered and uh, to, re- to remind everybody, you know, that's when he was murdered. Video footage of that did not come out t- till May. Um, and the, and the, the, his, his murderers that were, um, just sentenced this week, I think to life in prison, um, were not arrested till May, May, I think two weeks apart or so 25th and like the 13th or something. Um, anyway, so that happened. Um, and again, we'll get, so they're arrested, they were tried and put into jail. And you mentioned George Floyd, which was the catalyst to so much, um, yeah. uprising and racial tension. Um, yeah. Can I, can I pause you there for a second? Yeah. Uh, in the wake of George Floyd's murder, what gave me hope was seeing how the world responded. Uh, all the mm-hmm. videos of the people in different countries protesting the police brutality. Yeah. Yeah. Here in America, yeah. that gave me hope that the world cared and and it seemed to care more than many of the American citizens who want to you know, mm. celebrate um, our justice system. So that gave me hope. I wanted to plug that right there. Good but, example. You know, no, great. Keep going. Great example. But yeah, uh, George Floyd, May 25th um, again. And these both cases were we were made aware of them because of, you know, social media and the cell phone and whatnot so that, i think that is an example you know I, like i agree with you i think we are still talking about them because both of those murders were hit I the right word is historical or just seismic in these conversations but like you said it can be tempting to just pick like, okay trial over done that would be that would be doing and is doing a huge literal injustice mm-hmm. to the many many other instances like those and that are still going to be perpetuated unless different laws legislation and different accountability isn't taken into account and or isn't fought for um because again the reminder is th- these things don't happen unless a bystander is recording them on a cell phone right probably um and so that's there's a need to to go deeper and not not stop there and not say oh you know should we not be happy that justice was served it's like well again it's a both and justice might have been served in this individual case thank the lord but is that does everyone feel better no um yeah. more yeah. more sense of relief like Thank God that, um, you know, this did have, you know, that justice air quotes was served in this individual case or these individual cases, but how can we not be in these situations anymore? And so many other things need, need to happen and be talked about consistently. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's well said. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have, did you have more on that list of, of questions or just in this one question? This one question, just examples. I, when it, whenever mm-hmm. I talk about George Floyd and Ahmaud Arbery, I don't want to forget Breonna Taylor. Yes, and her life and her death, and um, that justice still is, isn't served mm-hmm. on her behalf, and it doesn't seem like it will be. Um, and that's the case in, of, of so many uh, 
people who have lost their lives due to racism in our country. And I mean, I, and I, I feel like I can say it. I can say racism. I can make a case for why it is. I'm not going to right now. We'll unpack it. Keep listening to episodes. But mm. um, yeah, just so many people have lost their lives to racism and injustice in our country. And, um, and, and I just feel like I want to remember her name um, as we remember those, the, the, um, it's hard to call it justice, what was done for those other guys, but accountability as we remember how those yeah. men were held accountable. I think we should also remember that some are not um, in, in Breonna Taylor's case. So, yeah, no, that, that's a great, great, great point. Um, yeah. Breonna Taylor's case for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to answer the question, I'd agree with what you said. And I think that was probably a given, but it's, you know, both. I feel hopeful personally because of, I'll make it even on, on a more micro level. Um, I'm, I'm encouraged by the majority of people I talk to or that talk to me about some of the things that have come up on the podcast, whether it's because they listened or not. I think that people are as contentious as things are. I think there are a lot of people that want to listen and that are just ready to learn Yeah. right now. And so I'm hopeful by those people um, who are a little more open handed um, with just, just learning. And I'm, I'm hopeful for, for that. Um, I'm just, I'm surrounded by a community that, there, there's a lot, I think a lot of um, those people that are just willing and wanting to learn that have a long way to go. And I, I don't mean to sound uh, for that to sound, you know, pretentious or something, but um, have a long way to go, but it's um, really positive. Like I feel like a heart posture towards um, these issues from a lot of people I know um, that maybe are later to these conversations I'm encouraged by. Um, sure. But sure, there's, more than I would like to say, you know, people also that want to talk and it's to pass along. Oh, oh, I watched this really good video. You should check this out. This interview you should check out. And, you know, you're smiling. People can't see you. Um, you can't see pod, me. But, Maybe uh, you can hear my, my chuckle though. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people listening probably know what I'm talking about, but you know, it, the video is just of uh, the one person of color conservative voice that is saying everything that they want to say and yes. gives them an excuse not to address these issues or to explain racism away and yeah. that's the kind of stuff that as time goes on i'm all about hopefully our listeners can tell having conversations and yep. even being willing to disagree with stuff but there's certain things that i i don't have time for if it's at yep. the expense of having productive conversation because that yep. that is not a you know, texting me of uh, one of those types of videos. I'll just say all these names out of it for right now. Um, yeah. Isn't a, isn't a open handed, necessary helpful conversation. So, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Rant, no, I rant I mean, stop. I hear what you I hear what you're saying, and I agree. Like I'm past the, uh, hey, here's a brown face. Listen to how they disagree mm-hmm. with you. Right, videos like I, I don't need any more of those. Um, I, I've heard it. And I'm willing to listen to counter counterpoints and have conversations like you're saying, but yeah. you know, you know, spare me those those handful of people who uh, disagree with uh, a consensus around some of these issues. And um, and I, I feel like where I am right now, personally, moving forward, it's just learning, right? Learning in a positive direction rather than um, trying to swap flies of of um, things coming at me that would uh, discourage me from pursuing justice, any kind of justice, right? Um, so, yeah, so I, I feel like a hopeful direction to move into is how can we continue to grow in uh, having people love and care for each other across cultural, ethnic, racial lines um, and barriers that, you know, have historically stood and presently stand in our country, right? So rather than listen to those who would oppose us, I want to pursue those who are, who are doing good work in this area. And saying good things, so yeah, yeah. I mean, am I more hopeful than now that we? Well, am I more hopeful now that we don't have what I would consider a white supremacist running the White House? Absolutely. Um, am I 
is it rainbows and butterflies? Smiling at that one too. <laughs> and my rainbows yeah, and butterflies that everything's you know overnight um, been great now. Yeah. Am yeah. I super happy with all the things uh, you know with accountability now? Yeah. It, you know, so it, it's a both both and thing for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Clearly, we should do a whole, whole episode on that question, but let's let's move ahead. Yeah, that that would be good. What are what are some things you've learned? So this is more about the pod. So this is where I'm going to check your homework that you referenced. So, I mean, what are some of the things you've learned from previous <laughs> guests um, on on this podcast now? So that, you can take that. Yeah. In any any which way, could be broad, yeah, so- could be specific. Like I said, I look back at every episode, right, and the titles and the guests, and um, just to you know refresh my memory. And um, let's see, I, I think every time you had Debbie on, she is full of wisdom. Mm. Um, and when I got to get on and talk about Shang Chi, just honored to be a part yeah, of that conversation. Yeah, you got to do one from, with her. Yeah, hear from her uh, family and life experience, and um, that's something that I love. And, and this may be, I don't know if it's a personal thing, but um, I love stories. So I think what, you, what you've what you captured in a lot of your episodes is just having people share their story, share their culture, share their family, mm. um, share how something has impacted them, which highlights an aspect of, of who they are and their worldview, their, their cultural or ethnic worldview. And, um, and so I, I love that because then I begin to learn how they think, how they approach, what they value. Um, and so... I think Deborah, I think you had Tabitha on, um, Aletha, is that how you say Aletha? Aletha, yeah. Aletha, uh, Lamberson. Um, I mean, she, she's an athlete. She has a good perspective on sports. I, I don't know if you would call me athletic. I like to lift. I don't, I don't think I have the athlete mind. Uh, you know, I played sports and stuff, but she has like a, like a high level insider view on, on sports mm. and, um, she's a baller literally yeah, and yeah. with her, with their intellect. Yeah, absolutely. And, and when, uh, I think you were talking about the Olympics and Simone, Simone Biles, right. Yeah. Was that on the episode, um, when she decided to value her life and her health over pursuing Olympic gold for her country, I'm like, yeah. yes, like that, that is absolutely a good value to have, you know, let others shine. You can step back. It's not on your shoulders. Uh, mental health of athletes, like um, every time you have her on, you, you need to get her back on. Um, so those are just yeah, some podcasts that I've remembered. Um, impactful, huge. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'd say the same. Um, preparing for this, I I can't really even put together. Yeah, are you allowed to say favorites? I mean, have to, me aside, because I'm here yeah. in this room. Yeah, so. I mean. Um, so you have to pick other episodes. I've also had my wife on here twice, so you know, you're, right. you're not even at the top, so sorry. <laughs> I'll take a second. I'll take a yeah. second to her. Um, but uh, yeah, what are some of yours, I guess, if I can ask that question? Man, I've learned, I've learned so much, and it's been like, I mean, I'm not just saying this, but a, a privilege and an honor to have everyone on. I have yeah. I literally get a front row seat. I mean, I, I get to learn the most, um, I feel like, because, uh, you know, I'm – dialoguing before and after we put out the episode i get to do the episode obviously i'm editing some stuff down so the conversation was even longer for me um so i you know and i'm listening to it again you know editing through stuff so it's truly a blessing um and i also have um had people on that i have known for most of my life or since Mm -hmm. college um so a little over a decade and um, or I've just reached out cause we had an acquaint acquaintances or I don't know if there's anybody that I've never, had never met yet. Um, maybe there was anyway, more to come, but it's been an eclectic group, which I always kind of envisioned. Um, I think I covered this a little bit in the previous episode with Caitlin, but I, I, I think starting it, I kind of knew that I had some eclectic circles that I was, that I'm just in yeah. that I knew that I would, not really have any trouble getting people to participate in these conversations. Um, but yes, I mean, for sure, as as a male, learned a ton from the women, especially the women of color that have come on and given their perspectives. I've just learned so, so, so much. Um, yeah, I mean, having Alethea on, Alethea on 
talking about sports specifically as you know a black woman and her insight into that stuff we, we talked a ton about the WNBA so many wake-up calls for me um as a male I'm um, not that I was an athlete like she is but as a a fan just how little I, I knew about the struggle and still yeah. do of WNBA players and inequity with payments and facilities yeah. yep. and yeah. just it it's crazy and just how much not just she knew but literally experienced her whole life I mean she's, she does ministry with athletes and is very you know involved still in that world and then understanding um a little bit of Puerto Rican and New York Rican culture from Tabitha. Yep. Um, and hearing that, I mean, I knew next to nothing about her culture, um, which having her come on, I knew I was going to learn a lot. Um, but man, that was so incredibly informative. And then Debbie, like you mentioned, um, love, love Debbie. We become um, very good friends as well. And yeah, her stories. And sharing her experiences have been have been very very helpful. So, um, yeah, doing the Shang Chi episode together um, was for sure for sure really really fun. Um, awesome. Doing that, um, let's see, man. I mean, it's been it's just been cool. Even reconnecting with some um, early on, I had my friend Mark Samudre, who's a Indian Indian American, who's one of my very good friends from college, um, and he just. He, his was very personal and it was really personal to the people that many of the people that are listened, like our friends, um, cause we, we, you know, grew up and went through college together. And so, um, it was great to hear his, his experience and it was, it was cathartic to, to talk with him and catch up with him. I bet. And, um, yeah, it was cool to, you know, reconnect with some of my high school friends, um, J Mac. James yeah. McAdoo's you know, over in Japan playing pro ball who had some right. time in the NBA and it was just like, right. he's That's just crazy. off the cuff normal, everyday talking about Steph Curry, you know, <laughs> LeBron and talk, like right. talking to like there's high school friends. I'm like, you, yeah. man, you just know these dudes. Yeah, I'm just crazy. a fan. Um, yeah. But his experience, you know, going to high school together and was really helpful. So I, I don't, can't pick a favorite. Um right. Aside from the ones that, yeah, we talked about, but so many helpful conversations. Um, I just had Dr. Um, Stephanie Bradley, who yes. is a professor at um, Radford University, super informative um, with all of, man, all of her her knowledge. And we were able to, I think, have a beautiful conversation of um, share passion for racial justice. And, but, and she doesn't. We don't identify with the same faith. She doesn't identify. She's um, not religious and not a Christian. And was really helpful to have dialogue back and forth about still the three main lenses we use on on the podcast. So, yeah, yeah, no, and and uh, we talked about hip hop on that too. Yeah, I'm yeah, a fan. Yeah. I'm a fan. I loved I loved hearing that. Yeah. So, yeah. and I mean, how could I forget? No, hip hop. But you know, Dylan, we did. I did that with him. Who does our music for the show? Um, right. He's right. man. He he's great too. Super yeah. informative. I mean, it. Yeah, everyone has been so, so so good on here. I just get to ask the long winded questions. <laughs> um. All right. What do you hope? We've kind of covered this a little bit, but what do you hope our listeners continue continually take away from the content on on here? Yeah. I mean. So I hope that they feel um, I hope that they feel that we're coming from a place of love when it's me. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think you are. I think you do this well. But I hope that they feel like I also am coming from a place of love. I don't want to um, be overly um, hateful, you know, rough or critical of people. If people are people, everyone is broken. Um, mm -hmm. We all have ugliness and sin in us. And um, I just want to, I just hope that, that they, they see that we're coming from a place of love. And I hope that the love of God truly is coming through us when we, when we talk. Um, yeah. I, I, I hope, hope <laughs> I'm about to say this word, but I hope that they see hope when we speak. Right. Um, I would desire that that would be an outcome of this, that they would have greater hope for uh, the pursuit of justice that um, 
uh, where I'm coming from, where I'm looking ahead, God is there. God is the one who is uh, the author of justice, the perfecter of justice. And uh, that's that's where we're going. So we know we will be satisfied when we hunger and thirst for justice and righteousness. Um, and so I hope that that they can can partner with us in that in that hope um, and then yeah. in, in the pursuit of peace. So um, love, hope, peace are, are words. Also hope that they hear humility, that we're not like, yeah arrived we're not experts we are have some expertise and some knowledge on this but we're not like you know the the one answer um honesty um yeah so those are just just some things i i i would want them to think that they can engage with us like if we were face to face that they would be able to honestly share without fear of being judged or condemned um for not knowing something you know so those are that's some of the atmosphere that i i think you have set up here with your with your interviews i think you've done a good job of showing all this and i hope my desire is that we could continue that so yeah i wholeheartedly wholeheartedly agree and i'll just i'm reluctant but i'll accept the compliment i that is what i would hope as well and i've always wanted to set up for the atmosphere that it would be something that isn't negative isn't synonymous with negativity and being critical yeah um but that we're faithful to be real and authentic yeah and um i mean those are kind of buzzwords but just truthful yeah and that we're willing to unpack things and going deeper as we're seeking justice but that there is hope and there's yeah like you said humility and that yeah that there's hope that we're not just synonymous with ripping stuff apart and calling things out and um, all that. Cause I don't, that's not what my goal is. Um, I don't want to see justice at the expense of kindness or compassion or, you know, dehumanizing somebody I disagree with. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I truly, that's, that's what I've wanted. And I, I'm sure I've messed up at some time, some points, but I hope that that is also what the listeners continue to, to take away. Um, I, I don't know if I said this on a previous episode or not, but I had somebody early on in the podcast, um, one of my white friends tell me, he's like, you know, I can't really describe it, but you know, your podcast, it's, I feel like I'm, you know, maybe a, a fly on the wall and I, I get to listen into these conversations you're having. And I was like, perfect. Yeah. Like that, that perfect. That's what I wanted. Um, just with that eloquent metaphor, um, that, that's what I want because I feel like these are the kind of conversations that need to be listened to um, by you know, a lot of our white friends. And mm-hmm. I mean that in a good way. Again, that's you know case in point an example of like I don't mean that in a overly critical, passive aggressive way. I just mean that like these are the kind of conversations that don't really happen in a racial dis- justice discussion group. Yeah. Headed up in a primarily white setting. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I would hope that hope, there's hope moving forward. People can in, in engage with us um, in person and even, um, I know social media is not a huge deal, but even um, hopefully people are listening understand this, but like we're not, uh, um, this this is obvious, but not so big a deal. Like I'm going to answer a, a DM like I don't post stuff or like have a podcast out and I'm I'm not willing to also engage. Um, I I always respond to to that stuff because I I want there to be I want to have further co- um, conversation and communication. I yeah, don't want to just, just put this out and be like, all right, there you go, I put it out like in your face. Like no, I want to like this is only this is only an hour or so. Um, I want to have further conversations. So I love when people reach out to have more conversation. I'm like, oh great. Um, your those conversations benefit me as well. Yeah. Cause I don't know. That's the only, I'd say one of the main downfalls of a podcast without necessarily a feedback type community. Um, is I, you know, I know what some people think, but I don't collectively know individual responses. Um, and I, yeah. not that I always need to, but it, it's helpful. Um, cause I, I'd want to know what, could be clearer what could be done better what people might disagree with um so yeah 
Yeah. What, what, what you've uh, set up here, this, this, uh, what you have here, you have set up a space where you can be brave. And I think we've heard that in all of your interviews um, over the last season mm. uh, is that you, um, you don't know how people are going to respond. You don't know how your community was going to respond. And yet you still got on the microphone, had these private conversations in a public way so that mm. you could share uh, with others, your thoughts and your wisdom and your processing and invite people to come along with you. And I, I think that's the gold of this podcast and what you yeah. have developed here. And um, I, th- I feel like so many of these, uh, of these pursuits of justice, like whatever it is, you know, be it podcast program, be it like gathering together in person, whatever it is, but so many of these pursuits can run over people and just leave them, yeah. you know, flattened on the road. And that's something that I would hope that this doesn't do that. We don't do that. Uh, we don't want to run people over. Um, we will invite you to come with us. Uh, yeah. And we'll keep going. Right. But we don't want to run people over. And that and that's what I think you've set up well. And I want to I want to see us continue that. Yeah. Avoiding, you know, I'd say avoiding. That's almost putting it too politely, but refusing complicity, but not yeah. lacking compassion, I would say, is, is yeah. how I kind of summarize that. I read uh, there was a quote in uh, the book Gentle and Lowly, which I'm in the middle of right now. Um, and he's talking about Jesus flipping tables in the temple when it's taken over. And I, th- I do think that can be taken out of context, not out of context, but overused. Cause it's not like he did that one time. Like, I'm not saying he only cared about justice one time, but he did that one time. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not that using one. that as yeah. a license to say, can't go to church oh, and destroy the bookstore. Right. Every week. <laughs> I'm not saying just, Oh, well, Jesus flipped tables. So we should do it every day. Um, yeah. but what, I think something I loved how the author put it, Dane Ortland, I think is his name, um, is he, he said in that instance, you know, that that was injustice and the real doers of injustice or um, I can't remember how I put it. I wrote it down somewhere. Um, the real offenders in that in that example, I'm pulling up my phone because I think I wrote it down there, were the people that had taken over the temple and were using it for unjust, unjust things. And it's, it's really his place of worship, the Lord's place of worship. Um, let's see where, uh, but the author puts it and he says, in that instance, we see in Jesus, compassion and indig- indignation rise and fall together. So yeah. like he flipped tables yeah. because he was compassionate right. for the people that that was offending. Yeah. Um, and so that, that kind of stuck with me and that's what I'd want kind of be, to be true of here of, you know, rejecting something, rejecting complicity with injustice, but not lacking compassion um, yeah, in how we, good. you know, and how we would go about it. Um, yeah. The money changers in that example were the real ones doing the overturning. So like he overturned the tables, yeah. but they were overturning the temple. He was writing something. Yeah. He was correcting something. Yeah. So whew, that, yeah, that, that was helpful for me. Um, yeah. So yeah, that, I think I more just piggybacked off what you said, but I'm hoping moving forward that is how these conversations continue to to come off. Yeah. 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 Um, all right. What's um we've personally talked about this I think off and on, but what's something you've been reading or watching uh recently that has been impactful for you? That is a great question. There, I mean, there's so much. So, I mean, you you watched it before I did, but um, Colin Kaepernick's uh, Colin mm. in Black and White on Netflix. Yeah. I feel like yeah. I feel like we should really do that justice and talk about it. Yeah. Because um, yeah. I loved that. it. It was powerful. I recommended it. I recommend it. You know. Um, uh, you gave me a book, Christmas gift that I read last week. Um, Permission to be black. Did you get through all that? Yeah, I got through all that. Nice. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's not very big, right? It's not very big. And it's by A.D. Thomason, um, Lumkyle. I don't know. Is that how you say his I name? I don't either. I, I mean, I told you when I got I, I, I almost misread. I can't remember what I meant to order. I think I read the title, and then when I got it, I thought it was something else. And it's yeah. not that I didn't want to read it, but I had a pile of books that I've told myself, I'm not getting any more books until I read through these. And yeah. Yeah, I just thought it would be better, yes, sir, so I passed it along. No, it was great. I appreciate it. I'll give it, I'll give it back to you because you know, it's hard yeah, copy, yeah. but um, I appreciate it. His, his experience as a black man in this country is very different from mine. 
I'm suburban. Um, he's not. Yeah. And he, he, so he talks about how he grew up. Um, uh, it's but, my journey with Jesus and Jay-Z, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Journey with Jesus and Jay-Z. Love it. Yeah, I want to um, read it. Yeah, but uh, even though I couldn't relate to the exact uh, situation he grew up in, like the economic, uh, where how he grew up in, um, impoverished, but uh, I learned a lot from how he processed from that viewpoint. And that's what I, like love about stories um how how you had so many interviewer interviews where you had people share their story um i think when we learn about stories something changes in our hearts we connect to yeah. people and i think we can also if, if we're thinking inner interculturally with an intercultural mindset we can gain um knowledge and wisdom from people as they share their stories um i spent a season just over this last year like probably a couple of months where i just pursued uh it was uh, fables from different cultures because in the, mm-hmm. in the stories we tell our children, uh, we learn cultural values. And so I just wanted to know, you know, what, what, what are we learning in these fables? And so yeah. I just had a bunch of children's books. So, um, yeah, so I read that book. It was good. That's permission to be black. So, awesome. um, and I, I recommend it specifically for the black audience um, yeah. that, that we read that book. So, yeah. Yeah. That's what about awesome. you? Yeah, I mean, there's so much more, but we'll do this every time we get on the mic. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you said, real quick, you said um, how important stories are, and this is something uh, yeah. I just reshared in my stories, but from Michelle Amy Reyes, who's the vice president of the Asian American Christian Collaborative. Um, yeah. She's brilliant. She's an author as well. I got her book. Um, right. uh, oh, my gosh. Becoming All Things. Um, okay. got her book for Christmas. Going to dive nice. into that. And spoiler, right, um, she's actually going to... Uh, be one of our guests here on the podcast. So that's awesome. super pumped um, to have her come on. She graciously um, agreed to to lend lend some time to the podcast. Um, it was actually scheduled for later last year, but we had to reschedule. Anyway, she put out something today, right on um, on the same line. Stories set the norm, and many of us aren't okay with the current story. The pain slash violence of our generation, broken marriages and family, mental health, systemic injustice. We have to tell the stories that are silenced, including our own, so we can start to rewrite the norm. Um, just thought that was beautifully put, beautifully written. Um, just kind of synthesizes, I think, what we're talking about largely um, yeah. so far throughout throughout this this episode. Um, but anyway, yeah, um, yeah, I agree. Colin in black and white story of Colin Kaepernick. Growing up, um, that was. Um, I don't know if I've talked about it on here, but very helpful, very also really powerful and lighthearted as well. Like it wasn't a difficult thing to watch. Yeah. Um, and I, I, you could watch it in a, I think I watched it, me and Caitlin watched it in two sittings. Um, if we wouldn't start like at 10 o'clock at night, it would have been one sitting, Like it flies by really quick. It does. Um, yeah. just super helpful series to, to watch, um, and listen to. Um, I just, I finished the book late last year, uh, Cast, um, which I think you've read that too. It's a thick, yeah, that's a thick book. Thick book it's good. Um, it's by good. Isabel Wilkerson, which is on, uh, yeah, caste system and um, just more about our Ra- our history. Racial caste system. Racial caste system. Yeah. Um, really, I mean, really, really good book. Super informative over my head in a lot of ways, but really, really, yeah. really helpful. Yeah, I really appreciate what she did there where she compared – uh, our culture, American culture with other cultures that have caste yeah. system and just, you know, brings clarity to that. We have a racial caste system in yes. our country. We've operated in that way. Just like, I think she examined India and, uh, was it Nazi Germany? Germany. Yeah. A lot of India yeah. and Germany so, parallels. Yeah. So I, I really appreciate how she did that. Which is a great, I mean, fantastic call out on American culture. Yeah. Just seeing this, the similarities. Yeah. Who we want. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I'm forgetting something, but um, I'm also list. I so I started this um, in physical form, and now just the season of life, little kids running around. I'm relying on audiobook, so I'm actually oh, listening too. through um, uh, President Obama's latest book. Not the one oh. he did one. I think with Bruce Springsteen or something. I have no idea what yeah. that's about, but the one before that. Yeah, they're like they're buddies. Yeah. Yeah, the one before that. Um, it's really good. It's just it. You know, it's hard to say it's not 
it, it's obviously po- political, but um, right. just it's cool to hear. I I like it because it's it's his story and it's just it's interesting. So that's awesome. I do audio books too. I recommend yeah. them. Yeah. The, I mean, they're made for the <laughs> the multitasker, which I'm not great at, yeah. but that I can I do read that. at the gym. I, I I burn through books when because I read them when I go to the gym work yeah. out. So feels so good when you can get up to uh, like two times speed. And I'm like, oh man, this is it's it. true. This is it. This is it. And then yeah. I'm like, oh shoot, I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Got to go back. Let's go down to one point. I relate. I relate. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. All right. I got some, uh, I know I gave you some questions ahead of time, but I had to do this. So for our listeners, so John Mark, we become good, fast friends, but we are newer friends. And this yeah, is going sure. to kind of help me out a little bit. I had to hit you with some rapid fire on this inaugural episode with you being <laughs> a co-host. And I don't think I did this to you last time. Uh, and don't worry, they're not um, NBA rapid fire. They're hard hitting questions here. They're uh, rapid fire that it's, it's my, um, take or my attempt to uh, get to know you by asking you about things that I'm pretty sure you're going to have really solid answers to or opinionated answers to. Okay. All right. All right you ready? Yeah. All right. Here we go. All right. Um, we'll start a little more light and I'm taking a chance here. The office or parks and rec? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, two different shows. Uh, uh, I love them both. So it's a hard question. Mm. Uh, we wouldn't have parks and rec without the success of the office. Yeah. Uh, I've seen parks and rec more than the office. Okay. So I think I'd probably go with parks and rec. Gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah. So I heard somebody describe, uh, the shows like this, the office is a bad show about bad people and parks and rec is a good show about good people. Um, so but we like the bad, like we like seeing the dysfunction, bad um, people. Okay. but we also, yeah, like not like evil, but like, yeah, you know, yeah. it's not great. You know, <laughs> and that's part of what makes the show great. Right. Um, Creed, but then, is, uh, Creed part- is not the best person. <laughs> Creed. I mean, I could point out flaws with like all of them, um, <laughs> but it's great. That's what makes it great. They're not perfect, you know? Um, hmm. And then they're behaving badly. So it's a, it's a good, sh- it's a great show, but it's bad. It's good because it's bad. And then uh parks and rec, um, it's just, if they're positive, happy, there are circumstances, but they band together. I mean, yeah. So I'll say Parks and Rec on that one. Okay. Yeah. Star Wars or Harry Potter? Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's quick. Yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jedi are lame. I like all the Star Wars stories that are not Jedi. And I hope, I, I'm sure I'm going to offend some people. But, I'm sure you I mean, are. I'm not, I'm not a huge the force. The Star force Wars is person. whack. Space mm. magic is weird. But I appreciate like the Mandalorian. I love it. So I love okay. the stories that that are adjacent to Jedi magic. You at least just won back a third of the audience that you just cut in half before that. So yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, I have some uh, some friend, good friends who are real Star Wars fans, and I've had to have this conversation with him, and he's had to come to terms okay. that uh, you don't have to love. We don't all have to love Jedi. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, good. That was a little more rapid fire. So Black Panther or the newest Spider-Man? Oh, man. <laughs> these, are, these are harder. They're going to get first. harder. These are, they're going to get harder. Uh, oh, shoot. Um, I haven't seen I the newest know. Spider-Man, but I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know yeah. you would. I envision yeah. you having this reaction. Yeah, <laughs> this is terrible. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to have to pass on this one. I really can't. I can't I'll give choose. you one pass. All right, but... So I love that both of those are top. Another top is Thor Ragnarok. So if that tells you something about me, those three are, are mm, great movies. Okay, okay. So you kind of took a pass. Legos. Oh, this, this, okay, these are starting to feel mean now, but Legos <laughs> or Marvel. This will just be things but, that people know I, so you I love. Do Marvel, I collect Marvel Legos. Okay, that's good. So that's a, that's a twofer. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but I mean, I was in the Lego, Lego more than Marvel. So... I, I mean, when Lord of the Rings was Legos, I was collecting those. So okay, there you go. I didn't even hit on Lord of the Rings. All right, Lego <laughs> and Marvel. Yeah. Zelda or Mario? Zelda. Okay. I mean, hands down, without a doubt. So speaking of Christmas presents, you you blessed me, and Caitlin, with Zelda, the Switch game. When yeah, when Breath I, of the Wild. Yeah, I'm, just rated Japan's number one game in history. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. 
Yep. So uh, we haven't had time to for the two of us to jump into it, but um, I let Ollie get wind of it, and he he started to play. So I've been nice. uh, I played with player. him for the other day for a little bit, and he he likes nice. it a lot. So good. I'm glad he likes it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like an it looks like an amazing game. All right, yeah. you uh, you got the two chains going on. So you go jewelry, or I know we talked shoes at one point. So jewelry or shoes. Uh, have to go, um, jewelry with that. I used to be into hats, but I don't wear them so much anymore. Okay. Um, or I don't collect them as much as I do, but, but, uh, I want to get into shoes. So, uh, you can help me with that. As you give me basketball knowledge, you can anytime. Uh, help me get into shoes too. Anytime we can talk shoes. I wear hats so much that, um, my kids don't like me not wearing a hat. <laughs> That's hilarious. My two year old will say, put your hat back on. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, it, it's not really a compliment or a criticism, I guess. I, I don't know. It feels weird when she says it, but I'm like, yeah, it's fair. That's who I am. I guess it'd be like if I had a beard and cut it off for the first time. Yep. All right, best area code you've lived in. Oh, man. Well, I love 804, mm. uh, but I grew up in 703, so I'm going to go 703. Okay. I mean, Even and, though Richmond is my home. Richmond is home, but. And you spent some time in. 757 in college, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm you know, 703. I'm, that's not even in the running. I just want to take a I, shot. I love 757. Yeah, love people from there. You know, you're you, good I mean, people, you got to say that or, or this this relationship might might take a hit early on. I know. I don't know how much of the, the mm. base is that. So mm, I love yeah. 757 too. Yeah, yeah. All right, you can meet any one person alive today. Who would it be? I can meet any one person alive today? Mm. Oh, man, that's a good question. Um, I mean, th- so off the top of my head, Obama, you brought him up earlier. That's probably why I'm thinking about him. I'll probably come up with a better answer to that, but I, I mean, I would love to meet, meet yeah. Obama. Yeah. I think that'd be a great answer. I have some, I would have so many questions and just want to hear more of his story. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great answer. Um, yeah. favorite movie. There's only a couple more. Favorite movie. <laughs> uh, I love, all, I love all the Marvel movies. Um, yeah. Yeah, so you pick a Marvel movie, and it's probably one of my favorites. Nice. Yeah. All right, last two. Had to hit on your family a little bit. So favorite date or trip that you and Meg have gone on? Yeah. Um, favorite trip. So this was a real meaningful trip. Um, our our oldest son died in infancy, and, and we saw it coming. His name is Jacob. He would be six in February. Mm-hmm. And um after he died, I mean, our world came crashing down, but um, our family and friends, you know, pulled together and gave us a trip to um, Key West and, uh, mm. and we stayed a few days in a hotel and um, it was refreshing. It was good to be there with her. So that's a really meaningful and uh, yeah. impactful trip. So I think I'll pick that one. Yeah. Yeah. Great pick. Yeah. Um, favorite thing about your kids right now? <laughs> favorite thing about my kids? Uh I just love playing with them. Uh, they're yeah. full of life, full of excitement. They're four. Eden is four. Webb is two, and um, yeah, they're just they're just full of joy. Uh, Webb is being potty trained, so I clean up a lot of messes. Mm-hmm. I don't mind it. You know, I love seeing him grow and learn things. And and uh, something about being four and like turning into a kid and seeing her like have actual intelligent conversations. It's just, it's fun. So I'd say those things. Yeah. Just watching them grow right now. Really fun ages. Awesome. Awesome. That was it, man. You did it. Yeah. Whew, I'm sweating over here. Those are good questions. <laughs> Black Panther or Spider-Man. That was a little bit difficult. Yeah. That felt mean. It felt mean to do that and then ask you, I, well, actually you knew it was Zelda, but I, I thought yeah. you might've hesitated more. Oh on, no, Zelda on, for sure. On a few yeah. of those. Mario's good, but yeah. Zelda's for, Zelda for sure. All right, yeah, yeah. All right, man. We gotta figure out a sign off. I don't got one. How should we sign off um, regularly? Yeah, that's something that uh, I think I think we could uh, play around with and see yeah. see what sticks. I'll have to do like a like a poll. Yeah, speaking to, a speaking poll to DMs. Nice. Yeah, All yeah. Right. Get people to come up with our sign off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, as always, listeners, for listening, especially all the way to the end. I'm really excited about 2022, where the podcast is going, um, and for just, yeah, the conversations that are going to continue to be had on here and hopefully in your individual conversations with, with those around you as we keep having these conversations about pursuing racial justice and, and kind of diving in here. 
Um, again, man, don't forget to check out Dylan Dent, who does our music for the show. And um, also, big thanks to um, Zach. I don't, usually, I don't think Zach, but Zach and Ashley Bush um, for doing our artwork. Um, and as always, yeah, just thank you guys for listening, and we will see you all next time. See ya. Probably stop pretending I don't really hold the key and I can't really push a button. I just step up to the mic and try my very best to bust it, but I ran out of breath. It's tight in my chest. My feet just might fail. I can't stand up. Breath. The nightmare might scare you the worst than reality. They hunt you by day, y'all rob me of my hard robbery. Everybody got a time, but that's less than comforting. I hope I'm alive by the time they choose to come for me. Mosquitoes in the vein, or leeches on my soul. This money on my mind is a fracture of my bones. You get crippled by continuing existence like a ghost. And they wonder why we drink, and they wonder why we smoke, and they wonder why we think that everything's a joke. I'm shocked that we can sleep, must be the thought of letting go. Thank you.